Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita. Um, I have a candle for you today that is definitely a luxury candle. So today is kind of another one of those contributions to the informal series that I've got going, which essentially introduces probably many of you to some luxury candle houses or even just more obscure candle companies across the board, whether they're luxury or whether they're not, that you may not have heard of. And I'm not necessarily recommending that you go right out and buy them, but it's a good, I, I think it's always nice to familiarize yourself with what's out there on the market, what's new and upcoming, etc. And then if you run across them in your travels and can find them for a good price or a good bargain, you might recognize it and you might remember what it is that we've talked about. So. The company today is Lourdes de Seraphine, and um, it looks like, oh, it's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> For a minute, I was like, I didn't bring the box. Um, looks like this. So Lourdes de Seraphine, this is the um, box that the candle came in, because when you buy from a luxury price point, you often get fancy schmancy packaging. So, um... This is what this looks like. Um, and the name of this candle, I should have figured out how to pronounce, and I did not, um, is Mansour Marrakech. Marrakech, I believe that's... And Marrakech is a um, city. I want to say it's in Morocco, but I could be wrong about that. Um, otherwise known as number 25 for Lord de Seraphine. So Lord de Seraphine does number all of their candles. And obviously, the lower down the number is, the more OG it is. So here's a smaller candle. This is number three, and it is Monroe. A lot easier to pronounce. Um, this one is basically just sandalwood and amber. This one I bought at um, TJ Maxx, um, and it was $14.99. I've been seeing some of these at TJ Maxx and Marshalls over the last couple months, and there's a reason for that, which is what we're going to discuss. But anyway, this was a cool $14.95, and for it, um, I got this lovely candle right here. So Lord of Seraphine has a very trademark aesthetic. Um, they've got this ceramic, they all, they're all like, um, like cylinders, <laughs> ceramic cylinders with a color coordinating ceramic lid and they match what is on the box. Yeah. Um, and they tend to be like graphics or designs, prints, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know that it's my aesthetic most of the time. I don't love ceramic, number one. And number two, I generally don't love whatever print they're using. Um, but it's a certain vibe, and I think for a certain consumer, really, really great. And we're going to get into that in a second. So this one I got from TJ Maxx. This is Monsieur um, Marrakech um, from a Seraphine collection. I don't know what the Seraphine collection was, but it's number 25, so the 25th candle that they have. Um, developed here. This one is citrus, green tea, and ginger. Um, the blurb says, an exotic paradise complete with bright sun, fragrant palms, and fresh ripe citrus infused with essential oils and featuring notes of bergamot, ginger dusted citrus, green tea in touches of apple, juniper, and clove, above peppered jasmine and tobacco. Number 25 is a complex scent that both energizes and excites the senses. And then they repeat that blurb in French, which I cannot read to you. Um, but this is, um, yeah, this is a, um, Cleveland, Ohio company. So I don't really know why there's French. They're obviously very, very fancy. Okay. Um, I don't know that it says on here. It doesn't say what kind of wax they're using. I would say it's probably a blend of some kind, some kind of softer plant base with some paraffin, I would imagine. Um, here's the thing you, their website is down right now because, and it says there's a big banner on the website that says 
we missed you. Um, check back later and like see our brand new house of Seraphine or something like that. So there's a reason why all these candles are hitting TJ Maxx and Marshalls and they did an enormous clearance on their website um, a couple months ago. Enormous. Getting rid of all of their product from what I could tell. They must be doing an enormous like redesign, re fab i have no idea what's going on but um the the banner on the website seems to imply that they are coming back um and i would assume with candles <laughs> so um we'll just have to see what that means but their trademark has always been um their print ceramics um i've always been curious about lord seraphine they appear in like the higher end um retail so bloomingdale's Saks those kind of stores. I haven't seen them um, even at Macy's. I mean, they're, 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 they market themselves as a luxury and they have a luxury price point. And to be honest, I can't even remember what the price point is, but it's like excessively high. So um, their large vessels are only single wick, unfortunately. Um, and they are 17 ounce. But I want to say that the price point was like, it was over 50 bucks, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then there's, now granted they are like the really nice ceramic and they have a design sense to them. And then the smaller ones are 6.4 ounces. So they're only six ounces. Um, and they also come here. I suppose I should have unboxed this. But I think I have once like as a haul for you guys. Um, here's the lid. And here is a Monroe candle. I kind of like this one. I think it's kind of pretty. Um, yeah. And that's a single wick as well. Um, Lord de Seraphine. This one has a, a warning thing on the bottom of it. But it just says, like, never leave the candle unattended. It doesn't really give us any um, sense of, like, wax formula. So very useless. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, um, I can't remember the price point on the six ounce. I want to say it was close to 50 bucks. I would never pay that amount. I, it would have to be a pretty miraculous candle, um, to spend $50 on a candle for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I do make exceptions for like really huge candles. Like, I don't know if you can see my coconut milk mango there on the piano is a, one of those, like, it's like 40 ounces or something with multiple wicks. And even so, I think I got it off Amazon for like 25 bucks. Um, <laughs> like warehouse deal or something like that. If it's a very large kind of statement candle, um, or one that is just extremely large and multiple wicks. And I know I'm going to love it. Like I can make exceptions, but when the candles get up, frankly, in the 25 to $30 price point, I watch it. <laughs> is this candle worth $30? Is it worth $40? Is it worth $50? That would be crazy. So I did buy several of these candles off of the actual website when they were clearancing them off. So this was off the website. This one was off the website. And I honestly, I think they were offering them for like 80% off, which even at 80%, it was still a lot and we had to pay for shipping and handling. So um, all those caveats apply. I would imagine that a lot of people who are watching this video, watching these videos of mine on YouTube, or if you're a subscriber to this channel, I do some luxury candles, but not really that many of them. As with many of you, kind of my bread and butter is like Bath and Body Works, Yankee Candle, Homeworks, Kringle, kind of right up the middle. And then I like some of the other candles that are a little bit more obscure to kind of round things out, like Veluspa, like Patty Wax, like Net, um, not Nest, I don't like Nest, um, like, um, gosh, I'm so tired. And it's like, I, I had coffee today, but it's, it's just not been enough. Um, milk, obvious, Milk House. What was the... The one from Ohio, Medina, Ohio, um, with the beeswax. Um, I'm losing my mind. You know what I'm talking about, though. That company. Um, I don't do a ton of luxury-ish candles, 
and this is part of the reason why. So, but um, at a particular price point, I was really curious to try them when they were clearancing them off. And I didn't know why they were clearancing them off initially. Now I know that they're just like completely redoing their entire, probably their entire presentation. They're just doing a huge brand like refresh apparently. But I would imagine some, especially of these really OG candles. Like I know that Monroe has like a cult following. So like, and this is like number three. So I think that there's a lot of like, really older candles in their fleet that they probably couldn't do away with even if they wanted to at this point. Um, so, man, and then this one I did find at TJ Maxx for $14.99. And I have seen this one there too, which is Aris or Aries. Um, and this one smells really good. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, I have finally burned one of these and this one was the one from TJ Maxx and this is the citrus green tea and ginger one. It still smells good and I know there's a lot of soot around there. Most of the soot was contributed in the final like three burns um, and that can often be the case for any candle. I did not wipe it down because I just wanted to be like honest and transparent with you about what it would look like if you did not <laughs> wipe it down. But if if I was like not reviewing, I would definitely just kind of keep on top of that toward the end of the candle. Um, the, and the part of the reason why it gets like this is number one, it gets extremely hot toward the end. Um, but then also these candles, and this is often true of a luxury candles, they reward you the longer than you burn them to be honest. Um, and that was the case for this one. So when I initially started burning this one, it started tunneling. And there was a point about halfway through where there was so much wax around the sides of it, it was like craziness. And it was just kind of like tunneling down, you know. And then about halfway through, I kind of got the knack of how to burn them, which is very, 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 very long. You burn them very long. You allow the ceramic to kind of heat up. Um, they burn slow, but they really want to burn for a long time. And I, I suspect there is a great deal of like soy or whatever else in this, which allows it to burn for a very long time without it getting very sooty, right? And toward the end, when there wasn't, I call it like the, the, the hot moment, right? When there they've where it's cleared down to the floor in terms of the pool of wax can't really melt any additional wax and so it just starts getting terrifically hot in the vessel hold on a second <sighs> excuse me i think allergies are probably not helping my fatigue um <clears throat> it got to the really hot place and all of it's like an iceberg all of the surrounding wax like just started melting really quickly. So that by the end, it doesn't even look like it tunneled at all. Um, it does. And this is a kind of diameter that I think needs a double wick. And actually people who burn these luxury candles on a regular basis, I have heard them say that before even my experience, is that if you want to try out Lord de Seraphine, you should definitely try out um, for price point, if nothing else, try out their smaller six ounce one. The diameter and the wick here is about where it needs to be. This is too large of a diameter for a one wick. And even fans of Lord de Seraphine kind of admit it. So let's hope that with that brand refresh, that's one of the things that are being refreshed is maybe a different approach when it comes to wicks or vessel size, vessel diameter, etc. Um, the fragrance is nice. It's perfumey. I don't know that I'm getting a ton of ginger and I don't even know if I'm getting a ton of anything that I would point out as tea-like <laughs> or even citrusy. In that sense, it's not an outdoorsy, like authentic kind of experience. It's much, more, it's a perfume conceptual. That's what it is. I think it's in the genre of, if you're familiar, Bath and Body Works, like, what is it? White tea and sage or whatever else it is, right? I would say it's very much in that genre. It didn't 
spell, smell inexpensive, but I can't say that it smelled overly expensive either. Like some candles just smell like this was a thousand dollars. I can't say that this smelled that way. And when you are paying a thousand dollars for a candle, you probably want it to smell a little bit more premium. Um, there was a little bit of a generic quality to it for me. Like I said, it's very much in the genre of Bath and Body Works. Um, there's nothing in this fragrance that is so unique I couldn't get it from somewhere else. And if you remember, my two non-negotiables for a luxury candle is number one, it needs to be a fragrance that is so special, so unique, so expensive that I can't get it anywhere else, that it smells that good. My second non-negotiable is that it burns like in a fairly reliable and consistent manner, right? I don't wanna have to like put foil around it, etc. cetera. Um, this one started acting kind of like it wasn't burning right, and I was about to, I, I knew I was gonna in the review be like, they tunneled, what's the point? But then it corrected itself as it went, and once I corrected my approach to it, which was just to, to, to light it, to set it, to forget it, then it started doing a whole lot better. So, I, I think it performs decently enough for that negotiable to be met, but to be honest, it wasn't a special enough fragrance for a premium price for me personally. So would I repurchase certainly this one? No, I wouldn't. And not at a higher price point than what I got for it, which was probably like $10. Oh no, it was this one. So it was $15. I wouldn't pay any more than that. Now, who is, this, who is this candle good for? I suspect that a lot of us on these on this channel are not going to be the dedicated audience for this, to be honest. I'm, I, I, I have a new category of candles now. This category of candles, it's not even luxury candles, I'm calling them hotel lobby candles. Hotel lobby candles are the kind of candles, because like in the fancy bougie, I don't know if you've noticed this, if you've been to a fancy bougie hotel lately, <laughs> Um, the bougie hotels now have like candles burning. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. They often will pay or contract a particular company or even a fragrancier to like come up with a trademark scent for their lobby and for their hotel chain. By the way, that's how we got Baccarat Rouge 540 was, was a hotel chain, I think in New York, contracting out the, develop, the designer of that fragrance and saying, give us a signature fragrance for this hotel. That's how we got Baccarat Rouge 540. I don't know if you know that. Anyway, um, it's become a thing. And I think that in this genre of hotel lobby candles, you have a candle that looks stunning from an aesthetic point of view because it's going to be sitting there and it needs to look bougie, right? And then a candle that rewards you the longer that you burn it. You need a very resilient candle, a candle that burns slow, a candle that doesn't soot all that much, a candle that you can burn the entire day, that somebody like, you know, somebody at the desk can light, but then not have to like nurse. And for 12 hours, for 16 hours, that candle can just burn. When I did Golden Bamboo um, from Homeworks a couple weeks ago, I actually think that's a hotel lobby candle. Um, and there are, and I mentioned this at the time, I think it's the Trump and the Hilton um, hotels that have, they have a signature scent called Golden Bamboo, although I don't think it's Harry Slatkin's Golden Bamboo. But that candle burned like a hotel candle in that I really didn't get the sweet spot of that fragrance until I had burned it four or five hours. And by about the four or five hour mark, not only was I getting really good strength and throw, but the fragrance itself seemed to mature and come into itself the longer that it burned, right? So in the case of Golden Bamboo, I got this amazing, deep, rich, honey smell, like a honey perfume, about at the four hour mark, maybe five hour mark. Up to that point, wasn't getting a whole lot. You know, it was like pleasant enough if you were standing around it, but it wasn't like brilliant. 
it really, it was just kind of like a vague, perfumey conceptual. And then by the fifth hour mark, it was like, wow, this is brilliant. And if you're in a hotel lobby, like, do you see how that could build up? You need like a candle you don't have to babysit and bonus points if it's aesthetic, etc. So I would say that, and this is from only burning one Lord de Seraphine candle, so I suppose I should withhold judgment a little bit, but my sense is that these are really good hotel lobby kind of candles. Um, you really have to, you have to be able to dedicate a good six hours of your day, seven hours of your day. Now, for me and my lifestyle and my candle lifestyle, that doesn't work because I have so many candles that I need to burn. I really want to burn one for about four or five hours and then change it out for something else, okay? I'm grateful for a candle that can go longer than that, but most of the time, I wanna move on to something else or I want to burn something else. And every day it's like the angsty moment. What do I feel like? How do I feel in my heart, in my spirit, in my vibe? What candle do I wanna burn? This is gonna be news for many of you who are watching this channel. There are so many people out in the world who don't have that complex. <laughs> okay? And it would drive them crazy if they had to in the morning like get up and be like, what candle do I wanna burn? Like that's insanity, not even to mention the number of candles that we have to have stored somewhere in our house, which for many of you in the Marie Condor, I think it's Condor, like vein are, would just be recoiling now at the amount of things that we have in the home, yes? For those people, these kind of candles make a lot of sense. There are some people out there who even have like their own like trademark luxury candle that they just always have their house smell like this or they always have their west wing or their east wing or their conservatory, <laughs> God bless, smell like this. And they just always get this candle from some fancy boutique in town, right? This is your candle company, I think. I really think so, especially given the fact that there are so many, I mean, every single one of them has its unique print, its unique design, its unique colors, right? And so somebody finds a certain combination of colors, of design, and of fragrance, and they just light it and forget it, right? And it can sit in the living room for like six months, you know, especially if they don't burn it super long, just burning it here, burning it there, doesn't really matter to them, right? You probably have friends or maybe even family members who fit into this category. These would be excellent candles for those people, okay? They would actually prefer this than a three wick Bath and Body Works candle, which to them doesn't look as thoughtful, doesn't look as finished, doesn't look as bougie, doesn't look, these people, they actually care more about the design aesthetic and the way that it fits into their house and how much they need to babysit it and how long they can burn it. Like those are the things that matter to them, yeah? And so in that sense, if you have friends and family and you run across these at a great price at Marshall's, Marshall's or TJ Maxx, these hotel, you know people in your life who are hotel lobby candle people, yeah? This is for you. This is for you. I have to say I kind of enjoyed it. And once I adjusted my expectations, really the strength and throw was fairly consistent. It didn't like knock you over, that is for sure. But it was also there and um, it was nice. It was nice. It was nice. And I have suspected that I will like a few of these a little bit more in terms of the fragrance. I just think you have to set in your mind what it is that you're looking for in a candle. And while this isn't what I'm looking for in a candle, there are a lot of people out here who are looking for this in a candle. The kind of people who like shop regularly at Bergdorf and yeah, those places. The fancy ladies, the fancy. These would be great bathroom candles, by the way. Um, especially if you got like one of these six ones and it's got the lid, it's got the ceramic lid on it. Done. Amber sandalwood. 
I don't think you can go wrong. And I know you can put almost anything in your bathroom, but like this is almost made for it, like a guest bathroom, right? Okay, that's what I've got for you. Lord Seraphine, Cleveland, Ohio with Fancy French um, and these ceramics. And who knows what is going to change when they bring their website back and whatever else. But anyway, I will link. There are still lots of retailers out there who still have the old Lord Seraphines. Some of them are on clearance. So keep your eyes peeled for it. Definitely let me know if you have any experience with Lord Seraphine or have anything to add, etc. Like I said, I kind of suspect that a lot of you are like not necessarily hotel lobby candle kind of people. Um, but I appreciate that the genre exists, both of candles and of people, if you know what I mean. I'll catch you in the next one.